Greetings, everybody. Turn your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 43. This is a continuation of the Ezekiel series. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Ezekiel 43. This is going to be some interesting information. Verse 1. Afterward he brought me to the gate, even the gate that looketh toward the east. Now we're talking about the temple here. Now if you listen to the so-called Hebrew roots people, uh, they're going to try to make you think that there's going to be a temple forever and we're just going to for all eternity, we're going to be sacrificing animals. Well, at least some of them believe that. Maybe not all of them. There's a lot of different flavors in that uh, Baskin Robbins, uh, I should say basket case in Robbins uh, ice cream shop called the Hebrew Roots and what have you. So, verse 2. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east and people this is not the shekina s-h-e-k-i-n-a-h -E there might be other ways to spell it uh with the emphasis on she s-h-e shekina which they'll tell you oh that's the glory of god no it's not the spelling's not the same and besides to the Hebrew Roots people, the Shekinah is Queen of Heaven. Yeah, the Queen of Heaven. They call her the Holy Spirit. And God the Father and the Holy Spirit had a baby, and then they named him Jesus. Or Yeshua HaMashiach, whichever, whatever. Yeah, something along that line. That's right, it wasn't Jesus. It was Yeshua HaMashiach. But... Uh, you know, Christ didn't, uh, I guess Christ shedding his blood on the cross just wasn't good enough. And now they got to do animal sacrifice for the rest of eternity. And then they'll point to this in Ezekiel and say, see, see, there's a, there's a temple in the kingdom. Well, they don't know who it's for. Of course, they don't know Jesus and who he's for either. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east, and his voice was like the vo uh, noise of many waters, and the earth shined with his glory. Now in Matthew 24, which is a end times chapter, they, the apostles, some of the apostles anyways, asked Jesus what it would be like when he came. Huh. So what does Jesus tell them? We're going to skip around a little bit. Uh, now, I did a really detailed study on Matthew 24. It's called Matthew 24 Revealed. I don't remember if it's too three, four parts, I don't remember. But we're going to skip around because I've already covered this material. All right, so... Um, all right, so Jesus comes out of the temple. And then in verse 3, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming? the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Deception. Verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Then it talks about wars and famines and pestilences and earthquakes. And they said this is only the beginning of trouble, sorrows. And then he says, you'll be delivered and killed and hated for his name's sake. And that's in verse 9. 
Uh, verse 11, many false prophets. And uh, let's see, let's keep going here. Verse 23. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. You know, and all these pre-trib rapture people will say, Oh, well, you know, that's for those other people. We're not going to be here for this. You know, why does Jesus go into so much detail to warn his people, not the people that deny him, but his people, why does he go into so much detail to tell you the events and what to look for? Because we're going to be here. That's why. Then if any man, verse 23, then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. See, there's going to be false Christ first. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, a bunch of satanic miracles, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he, the Christ, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. Now here, here is the punchline. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, for as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse 29. Immediately after the tribulations, the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heavens shall be shaken. Verse 27, For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Let's go back to Ezekiel. Verse 2, And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east, and his voice was like the noise of many waters, and the earth shined with his glory. Well, you know, if it's like lighting, lightning from the east lighting up the west, that's the earth shined with his glory. Now, what about this voice like the noise of many waters? Where do we read about that? Well, that's found in Revelation 1 and verse 15. Speaking of Jesus, it says, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And his voice as the sound of many waters. Hmm. Let's go back to Ezekiel 43, verse 2. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east, and his voice was like a noise of many waters, and the earth shined with his glory. Verse 3. And it was according to the appearance of the vision which I saw, even according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city, and the visions were like the vision that I saw by the river Chebar, and I fell upon my face. And if memory serves me correctly, that was in chapter 1. And the glory of the Lord came into the house by the way of the gate, whose prospect is toward the east. So the Spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. And I heard him speaking unto me out of the house, and the man stood by me. And he said unto me, Son of man, the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever, and my holy name, shall the house of Israel no more defile, neither they 
nor their kings by their whoredom, nor by the carcasses of their kings in their high places. In their setting of their threshold by my thresholds, and their post by my posts, and the wall between me and them, they have even defiled my holy name by their abominations that they have committed. Wherefore, I have consumed them in mine anger. Verse 9. Now let them put away their whoredom and the carcasses of their kings far from me. And I will dwell in the midst of them forever. Thou son of man, show the house to the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquities and let them measure the pattern. And if they be ashamed of all that they have done, Show them the form of the house, and the fashion thereof, and the goings out thereof, and the comings in thereof, and all the forms thereof, and all the ordinances thereof, and all the forms thereof, and all the laws thereof, and write it in their sight, that they may keep the whole form thereof, and all the ordinances thereof, and do them. This is the law of the house. Upon the top of the mountain, the whole limit thereof round about shall be most holy. Behold, this is the law of the house. And these are the measures of the altar after the cubits. The cubit is a cubit and a handbreadth even the bottom shall be a cubit, and the breadth a cubit. And the border thereof, by the edge thereof, round about shall be a span, and this shall be the higher place of the altar. And from the bottom, upon the ground, even to the lower settle, shall be two cubits, and the breadth one cubit, and from the lesser settle even to the greater settle shall be four cubits and the breadth one cubit. So the altar shall be four cubits and from the altar and upward shall be four horns. And the altar shall be 12 cubits long, 12 broad square in the four squares thereof. I wonder if each cubit is for one of the tribes of Israel. You know, 12 tribes, 12 cubits. I don't know. And the settle shall be 14 cubits long and 14 broad in the four squares thereof. And the border about it shall be half a cubit. And the bottom thereof shall be a cubit about. And his stairs shall look toward the east. And he said unto me, Son of man, thus saith the Lord God, These are the ordinances of the altar in the day when they shall make it to offer burnt offerings thereon and to sprinkle blood thereon. And thou shalt give it to the priests, the Levites, that be of the seed of Zadok, which approach unto me, to minister unto me, saith the Lord God, a young bullock for a sin offering. And thou shalt take of the blood thereof, and put it on the four horns of it, and on the four corners of the settle, and upon the border round about. Thus shalt thou cleanse and purge it. Thou shalt take the bullock also of the sin offering, and he shall burn it in the appointed place of the house without the sanctuary. And on the second day, 
Thou shalt offer a kid of the goats without blemish for a sin offering, and they shall cleanse the altar as they did cleanse it with the bullock. When thou hast made an end of cleansing it, thou shalt offer a young bullock without blemish and a ram out of the flock without blemish. And thou shalt offer them before the Lord and the priests shall cast salt upon them and they shall offer them up for a burnt offering unto the Lord. Seven days shalt thou prepare every day a goat for a sin offering. They shall also prepare a young bullock and a ram out of the flock without blemish. Seven days shall they purge the altar and purify it, and they shall consecrate themselves. Uh, when you consecrate something, you're setting something apart for special. Verse 27. And when these days are expired, it shall be that upon the eighth day and so forward, the priests shall make your burnt offerings upon the altar and your peace offerings, and I will accept you, saith the Lord God. See, this is very, very uh, similar language to what's going on in the book of Leviticus. I mean, Leviticus was written for the book of, uh, well, the book of Leviticus was written for the Levitical priesthood, the, the tribe of Levi. And of course, they specify Zadok, the family of Zadok. So, all right, well, that's the end of Ezekiel 43. I guess I'm on the home stretch. And uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.